Okay. No, she's the horse person, so that's her first one, eh? Okay, guys, welcome back to Great America Outlawed. Coming at you this week with a bit of a special episode. We do have a friend of the show, Paul, coming in. He is, of course, a resident of Jasper who just went through the evacuation and the fire and all that. And he's going to give us sort of a first down account of what went down, how it went down, uh, and what it's been like since. So uh, I know a lot of people have been talking about Jasper, this and that, but um, I haven't heard anyone talk to an actual Jasperian. So I feel like it's going to be fun to do that. And of course, uh, Paul's a friend of ours, personal friend, so it kind of works out. And first of all, I mean, I guess we should just start by saying that we're super thrilled that uh, that your house didn't burn down. I mean, it was when I talked Absolutely to you. Absolutely correct. Yes. When I talked to you the night before, it was it was borderline. Oh, yeah. When I talked to oh, you the yeah. night before, I would say it wasn't even borderline. When I talked to you, you were basically convinced that your house was would be gone. Yes, we all were. The whole town watch the cbc news whoops <laughs> i didn't but the whole town did and all they said is it's gone and they didn't retract that i don't think either so we all went to bed say what was that thursday night uh no wednesday night and then woke up thursday morning to uh to actually see that the town was still almost three quarters still standing in all the main infrastructure and one whole side of town saved and it was it was glorious morning we had pictures from the inside from firefighters who were there and yeah great hope so where was this when you woke up you woke up after at your evacuation place like where were you at that yes time? yeah everybody was sent west at uh around 10 p.m that evening uh, the alert came out and it was only an hour about an hour before the alert that there may be an evacuation coming. <laughs> then an hour later, it was now. We only have one direction to go, and it was west. So we have one highway open, west only, and 200,000 people. And that's, Was it north? Is it uh, north then about west? 180, about 195,000 people were tourists. <laughs> Sorry? Wow. Is it yeah, north then west? Like the one where you have to go north then west, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, um, it's a northwest uh, direction, uh, so it's, it's northeast going eastbound. Yeah, yeah. But right. eastbound had a fire near the transfer station, which is approximately a kilometer and a half east of town. At the same time, there was a fire coming in from the south around Athabasca, um, Athabasca Falls on the Icefield Parkway, number 93. That was a major fire and a hundred year fires, they're calling it. Uh, the worst fire they've ever seen in the national park history. And it came right up the valley towards Jasper from the west. And uh yeah, that was that was the one that uh the one that was at the transfer station was the one that actually alerted everybody to leave immediately. But it wasn't really planned out very well. Yeah, there you go. Here's your intersection. So south is the 93, and then those highways that go east and west, uh, well, the one that goes west, east kind of goes north for a long ways, but it's an eastbound. Yeah, we were all diverted in that western direction, left, everybody. And the standstill for traffic was at least two hours, there were buses parked in front of my house, three rows into town that didn't move. And the whole town was evacuated at the same time and just traffic jam bottleneck um i don't know what the situation was because i didn't leave too soon it was too busy <laughs> there's no point the fire so, didn't so leave I, yet i got a couple so, of, yeah, i'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a bunch of there. yeah you have a, a picture of the southern highway 93 the icefield parkway it's right about where you have it there is where the fire started so well down yeah, here down, down right down, around down, here yeah right in the bottom yeah, you pan back a little bit, make it bigger, and it's down towards Athabasca Falls. So a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And it's approximately the bottom of the screen where you see the highway. Oh, right around here somewhere. Yes. Yeah, right about there. And then off to the east, northeast, you have a fire at our garbage transfer station. 
I drove by there today a few hours ago. I went through to Hinton and then back through uh, to where I'm staying in McBride. And the transfer station is still smoldering. There's high winds. There, there doesn't seem to be any other fire burning or smoldering anywhere. Uh, but there, it's basically uh, into a mountain and it stops. It joined a fire we had two years ago. So that all burned together. And uh, to care a mountain that you see in Jasper is one side of it's completely gone. That side of the mountain range down the parkway to Athabasca Falls, I believe, is all burned. It didn't burn Marmot Basin. It didn't get up high enough, which on this picture is the southern highway. But on the left hand side of the highway up very right high up, you see Mount Marmot Basin and then the corner mountain where the tramway is Whistler's Mountain did not get burned either. Uh, it did in the lower parts, so maybe 8,000 feet up, forest in there burned. So if okay. we come a little closer yeah. in here on the town. Right. There's then... the town. Okay, so yeah. the bottom left of the town, kind of shaped like a boomerang. Uh, most of the infrastructure in the, in, on the interior to midtown, where you see the red, I guess that's a hospital. Right here, the hospital? Yeah, the hospital was saved. And then most of the infrastructure east of that and everything, the houses, everything, every street, the entire outer rim, including Cavell Apartments, and everything along that, there's a bench land of uh, the left-hand side of town, that far left where you see nothing but, that's a big hill there that goes up to Pyramid Mountain. Everything along there, including Stone Mountain Lodge, the very left-hand bottom corner, there's all townhouses all had sprinkler systems everything on the outer edge of town was saved but everything in the middle not everything but sporadically along Connaught and patricia street houses are either there or they're not and everything in the middle got burned um, there was trailer parks in the middle i'm not sure if any of them survived it's block after block after block yeah and you see that right there those cul-de-sacs, there's uh, big houses in there. And then you see that middle interior, all that structure in the middle. A lot of that's gone. And I can't say what, but um, uh, the hardware store, the new hostel, the doctor, Dr. Slack's house, there's this a historical house, Charlie Finley's house is lost. I have eight friends that lost their entire house gone <laughs> and it's just it's heart-wrenching you know the whole town just we could see this coming for a long time and there didn't seem to be much to do about it um just seeing the notes i have here they so saved all the just infrastructure this north half of town is what was saved uh, yeah, it's a north, well, it's east on the map, but yeah, the northern whole section from Mayette Avenue in Hazel, which is kind of the middle of town, goes across the tracks. It joins up with the 93 highway that, that goes to Takara Lodge uh, across the highway. You join up with the Ath or the Mayette River. That's entirely burned. Okay. Everything in there is burned. This is Hazel Ave right here. So that's mm, basically yes. the, the line. Yes. Everything to the east of that is okay. And then everything to the west of that is subject. Uh, two gas stations exploded, uh, kitty corner to each other. Didn't take out much more around them, just uh, those two gas stations on the east of town. Uh, a lot of houses, Houses were spared along Connaught Street because there's this big boulder pile that was left there from a construction site that pulled out of town. They left this massive three or four story boulder pile that they excavated and all the houses on the inward side of that on the main road were spared within the boulder field. This is what the firemen were telling me. They had a they had 160 kilometer an hour winds or 100 mile per hour winds as this fire was burning. And then, thank God, rain came. Uh, yeah, I just have to mention the fire departments I saw in my journeys, I drive for a living. So I get special permits to drive through the closure of the highway. 
Uh, they're from uh, Pemberton, Squamish, you know, uh, all over the place. Everywhere in Alberta you can think of, from Fort McMurray, uh, Grand Cash, Hinton, uh, Iman McBride, and Vermont. They came to the aid of everybody. There's like 200,000 tourists came into these tiny little towns in Western BC and flooded them. And it was met perfectly. These people were great. You know, we're staying with people uh, who were sent, uh, the gentleman was sent out to the fire the day we got here at eight o'clock at night. He was sent to Jasper and he spent a week there fighting fires. And I got a lot of pictures, a lot of great stories and hope, you know, through this guy, you know, just heroic stuff. Yeah, McBride, uh, the fire halls, everybody involved. Yeah, we lost 358 houses. Um, yeah, some people were firefighters and watched their houses burn. I didn't realize that. I'm just going through my notes here. So I got um, some questions. We got some yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Questions. Yeah. Lots no, of questions. Absolutely. Go ahead. They're going to ask some pretty weird questions too. So what, what did you mean by the CBC? Like basically just saying that the Jasper there, was gone. Like is, the reports it, it, of the town were disaster that night yeah. when everyone left. It was gone. It was over. Right. You know, like they just, they jumped the gun and they did. Did it seem like when? there wasn't enough note? Like, why why was there not more notice that this was happening? Like you mentioned the I winds. Have no idea. That, like, I have no idea. That sounds uh, super, super um strong winds. Like, wait, we don't get strong winds like that here very often, do we? No, I mean, that's, that no. Seems crazy. Uh, it's been or the windiest year the I ever remember. You know, I've been in the park for how long have I been in the park? Over 20 years now. And I've never seen wind like this year. It's just been too windy. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's unseasonably cool, too, for the hottest place in Canada. <laughs> but they, uh, yeah, the back burning, uh, stuff like that hasn't been done for a long time. We had some serious fires two years ago that took out our grid. So the town was out without power for a couple of weeks. And, you know, we had to jimmy the generators and run freezers off and on and keep everything fine and now we have to throw them away by the way power's been out so long we have to treat our freezers and fridges like dead things and throw them in the dump <laughs> it's one of these wow. things towns i didn't know that i had no idea fort mcmurray is one of these towns that recently burned and yeah they had to do that you don't even open them up you just throw them away they're all in wow. so so what <laughs> yeah. did you uh did you would you have had an option to stay with your home? Like I remember we no, I remember no. we we had uh, the fire in the interior there, like near the shoe swap, and yes. the people were trying to oh, get yes. back to their homes to save their homes, and they wouldn't let them. And so this is yeah, like, like like yeah, you that been... era I remember they were arresting people for with hoses, putting out their own fires and things, and like the... so you wouldn't have been able to stay then to to do your no, own... I wasn't allowed to at all. It was a it was a pretty much a forced evacuation. It was a federal evacuation. It, you know, it had, it had, there was no, you couldn't stay. And so how much note, how did it, how did it happen? How did it come up so fast? It seems. Well, the one that was coming from the South and the 93 seemed far enough away, but uh, I've just heard over the last 24 hours, a little suspicion of the fire to the East, the one at the transfer station, you know, they're suspecting something, there's something about a tree that was either cut down or knocked down or something suspicious about a tree on the ground starting the fire. I don't know anything about it, but, you know, just hearing. Even though your name is Paul Arsenault, you don't know <laughs> yeah, anything yeah, about yeah. how this fire started. Yeah, we're, we're mean, French. Uh, we guarded the Arsenals uh, in France, I guess. That's where the name comes from. Yeah. Arsenault. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks to yeah, we're not, in the we're, not Arsons. <laughs> no, we're old we're old mariner French people name. You know, so there's a lot so, of so so you don't know how either of them started or or was it a lightning, was it lightning apparently or? with the one in the south and then the, the one at the transportation station, I'm not sure. You know, and there's um there's a a gas plant back in there that's closing down. We have an electrical grid back in there. It's a it's a, a place for a CN rail. Uh, you know, it's it's an actual stop for a rail. 
There's more so, to it than just the transfer station. So both dark. fires happened. Uh, they kind of combined. Did they combine? Did they meet each other eventually type thing? Uh, from what I saw, yeah. They came in from uh, the south and then the east. The wind was horrible, so it probably blew it all over the place, 100, 100 miles per hour. There were trees being knocked over by this wind. Like They'd never seen a wind like this in their lives, and these trees are as old as all three of us put together. You know, they just fell down. Remember kind of Stanley Park falling down that night. You you know what I mean, Graham, for sure. And yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, I just, I just. There were 400 uh, year old trees that couldn't take a wind all of a sudden. There they well, go. That be, I saw the picture of the across, across the, would it be across the lake or something with all the, mm -hmm. uh, all the dead trees and, and all, all the beetle infested trees or whatever too, that there yeah. seemed to be a lot that were just ready to go up. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we we have standing dead from Banff National Park all the way through here. Our park's three times as large. It's all forest. There's hardly any infrastructure dwellings. It's it's great backcountry heaven. But everyone knows Banff and Lake Louise. That park's very old and famous, and we're like the northern section of them. They logged when I moved from there 15 years ago to Jasper. I lived in Banff, and they logged very successfully around that park. We're the same park system, but yet we're not. We have different rules. You know, we're like, don't touch anything. Leave it the way it is, but don't let it burn naturally. You know, we can only go so far. And uh, if it's natural, then it burns. And Darren knows a lot about this as a forest firefighter. Yeah, well, I would say I'm, a, I'm definitely not a forest firefighter. I have uh, <laughs> the training. I, I have tra I am, uh, you know, I have a bit of standing, but I wouldn't, you yep. know, that was 25 years ago. Um, so even right now, the town's locked down that, even though that the fires are mostly out of control, they won't let you in? Uh, no. Uh, uh, there's no access for anybody. Uh, there is some recovery going on for the fridges and freezers. Like I said, uh, people are getting permission for people to take them out or you can look that up online uh, there's all kinds of uh you know sites for uh for knowing what's happening um it, no, I wait. Just to drive through i can't really stop i can't go to my house i think that's the ninth they're opening the highway on the ninth and currently isn't really like, everyone can isn't everyone can go back home on the ninth then i don't know yet that hasn't been said uh, it's just that the highway is going to open. Is it a power grid problem? Is there like no power in town? They're trying to fire up some parts of it, but it's kind of dangerous. So it's told there's some flare ups that, you know, damage that they're not sure of. Uh, things got singed pretty hard. It's hard to turn the gas back on and Atco's working on that. Uh, you know, it's, but as far as we know, we're, we're waiting till the ninth. It's an extended camping trip. <laughs> we're we're handling it well. I mean, we didn't lose our house. There are a lot of people that we know that didn't, but a lot that we did that lost everything. And you know, you just pack a bag, leave your house. That's all you have, and that's what I left with. And I've had to do a little shopping here and there to get some clothes. But uh, you know, I'd hate to be one of the people that lost their entire house and everything in it. You know, when you, you're in a place for about 10 years or so, you, you get to store a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> Graham, you just moved recently, and so did, oh, yeah. so did you. And Darren, so yeah, it's a, it's a hard job. Oh, I can't imagine having to leave leave the home. When with, I with thought just a bag, With just a bag, I mean, that'd be crazy. That's right. When I heard my think... house was gone, we were going to move in about five years, so I said, oh, it's probably easier that way, but... <laughs> You, you were know, asking me where you should move. Now that I now that I have a house, yeah, you were saying to uh, along the Crow's Nest Pass, get a farm. <laughs> It'd be nice, yeah. Dude, you could sell that have house a lake. and get a quarter section on uh, I like Hornby Lake on Vancouver Island. That's nice. Well, what? we should talk about yeah. the donation. Oh, yeah. uh, get a lot we should talk about the donation page too. The um, the community yeah, fund before we forget. Team Society. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, we actually know people that work for this uh, society, and it's 
entirely grassroots, and that was exactly what I was looking for. I didn't want any of the big name corporations involved in anything I had to say. Uh, yeah, it's Jasper Community Team Society .ca. And I have Adam Curry has responded to my email with this today, too. I sent him a few funny things and told him about this. He's mentioned us on the No Agenda show, which is quite nice. You know, uh, we can do that from time to time if we need help. So <laughs> we're not, I never ask anybody for help, but it's amazing how many people help you when you need it. And yeah. it's overwhelming. Everybody's so, just open up their hearts. People have been. Uh, uh, want to like know where to donate to. And there it is. Yeah. <laughs> just for community team society dot ca. They so what was it like? Some uh, of the most needed people already. And now they have to. So, yes, sir. We've got a delay here, so sorry about that. So, what what about what was it like? To, yes, you met you met the firefighter that kind of saved your home, right? I mean, in, in a way, like the, oh, he's he's having internet troubles. He's there. my host right now in McBride, and yeah, he's a he's a great guy. He doesn't want his name mentioned because he doesn't like the word hero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you met a bunch of heroes, right? That saved oh, a, lot yeah. of your, a lot of your yeah. town. So, yep. Yeah. And they just they jump into this stuff. This is overwhelming. It's uh yeah, the support is great. Do you uh do you think the fact that it's a national park is affecting <laughs> access? Uh it's hard to say. You know, um because know you fall under a bunch of weird they got a bunch of weird jurisdiction over you and all over the town, right? Yeah, I lease my land. I don't own any of my land. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> I've got don't we all? Uh, yeah, I own the house, but that makes the house more than double what it's worth. So you're paying out of pocket an abnormal amount of money for a house that's worth less than half of that. Uh, the rules are set into place so it doesn't turn into Aspen, Colorado. It's called Aspen Rules originally. Uh, it's work to reside rule. You have to work there to buy a house or business owner yeah, there's stipulations, but still, that's supposed to keep the price down. A lot of people that lost their houses are insured for very little money. And I think that uh, this, the town of Jasper and the government should tell them that these leases that they hold are refundable for how many years they still have them. Nobody's hearing that part of it. And, you know, there's a lot of money we're talking. More than what you're being given. I'm sure in a lot of cases. And a lot of the leases are either 99, 35 year leases. I believe mine's 35. And, and it made my house cost 400, maybe thousand dollars more than it should be. So that kind of cost and that kind of loophole thing should be explained better to the people that think they have nothing that just got their insurance claims. I've heard many people talk about their insurance claims and i'm saying that where's the lease then where is this government lease refund for what you've already paid for this lease that isn't yours there's a refund say something these people call them you know and another thing too the fire department doesn't have any kind of a what do you call that when everything standardized station sorry standardization they all get together and then their stuff fits <laughs> it should be a standardized fire code for equipment and firefighters. <laughs> so I, I heard a show where um, uh, one of the old park, he worked in the Jasper park management system uh, a little while ago, oh, yes. um, okay. like quite a few years ago. And then he quit after like six months, but he, he was ranting about how they're just, it's, they're not really listening to the, the firefighters and when, what needs to happen in order to stop this from no. happening because they don't want to touch all the, it's kind of like what you were saying. You don't want to touch any of the wilderness or you don't want to touch anything so that, um, and then it makes, it makes everything worse. Was there, yeah. was there any talk about that? I mean, people have said this was a tinderbox and that there was, they were fearful of a fire happening in Jasper apparently many yeah, years, years ago. ago. It almost hit our town, took out our power lines that they just put in a year before that. We hooked to, we were hooked to the grid two years ago, and we haven't had more power outages since. <laughs> no, that when do, 
when in this era is anybody interested in listening to anybody but themselves? Yeah, this I mean, it even sounds like era. Darren, it even sounds like the indigenous peoples had this under control thousands of years ago where yes. they, they kind of knew yes. how to manage this whole thing without uh, like yes. it was it was showing that there was a, oh, yeah. a, a cyclical mm -hmm. 30 to 40 year burn, I think, uh, or something mm -hmm. like that. That's right. Yep. Yeah, you got to add it all up and think, you know, timing and when they pulled the plug and, you know, the mismanagement and no backburns for the last two winters. I have driven everywhere, and Darren's driven everywhere. You've seen this province and BC. I specialize in the BC part. No backburns, no pre-burns, nothing. In the 90s, they did this in a way that was almost science fiction for the pine beetle. You know, the big fires I'm talking about. The, they had they had every fire department surrounding fires that were as big as... Uh, a Costco plus the parking lot full of trees and they're just burning them. They were doing things that were, you could see for miles away as you're driving at night. And you're like, why is this forest fire on fire? And, oh, the entire fire department surrounding it. They were getting around this pine beetle problem. They were burning it out and killing it. And then something happened. They stopped. And I haven't done anything since the 90s. And I didn't realize how long it was. But... Uh, yeah, you see the Kamloops fires, 2002, 2003. I drove there uh, yesterday. I got to drive there from McBride yesterday to Kamloops. It's, there's still places that look like it just burned this year. That was 2003. And then the rest of it's kind of nice and green by now. But, you know, every town you see got burnt out. And, you know, those days I thought were over. Now we just jump right back into it. You know, there's got to be a well, lot of the spraying them with, uh, you know, the spraying them with Roundup now too. Before the forest oh. company, the forestry companies go in, especially. Yeah. In yeah, I'm aware of that. There's there's a lot of uh, cut between Edson and Edmonton, and there's outcry because they're going to spray Roundup all over it between the highway. You know, I'm thinking maybe I just roll my windows up and shut the air off when I drive through places. How well, can you get away from it? Too. It dries it out. Sorry? So. It dries it out. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, my my my. Uh, that's right. My father-in-law died of a, a stage four lung cancer in England because he used a lot of Roundup in his fields. He's a farmer. Didn't even use a mask. I mean, they they told you it was okay and safe. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> but yeah, we got a lot. We got a lot of people that just really didn't do much for their positions, and I hope they step down. It'd be good to see, good to see some people say take some integrity and you know quit their positions. You know. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like this. And, this and is, that's that's a bold thing uh, to say because I like kind of like this. Positive. This is from uh, Gilboa's you know, ministry. I, I just uh, have I. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> This is from Gibbo's uh, ministry, describes the audit performance as good within Parks Canada. But if you take a look at the status of these programs, it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty interesting. So there's like internal audit of government housing management of Parks Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, the planned management action plan completion date is 2016 and its uh, implementation status is 50%. The next one is like business continuity, continuity planning, April 2019, 20% finished. Uh, Claim and litigation management consulting. So who knows what that's all about? That's 8% finished and it's supposed to be done this year. Occupational health and safety, 50%. Five-year human resource regime, 0%. So, I mean, they, they can't even fall through with these types of basic things, it seems like. Are you reading McKenzie's reports or the government reports? Or are they the one and the same? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Yeah, they get them to do all their work. It sounds like they're a way of talking. Yeah. Well, you know, we're living in an era where people know better than we do and shut up and we're going to do best and follow along. Yeah, that's, I mean, it really is too bad. It's a, it's a crazy situation. I mean, it is great that your house is okay. It sucks that you're going to get out of it for another, for another two weeks. But, um, 
So what do you think? I mean, a bunch of people are saying that about uh, that because the uproar is already going on about it was a directed energy weapon because there's still some trees. <laughs> Look at the trees are fine, but the houses are gone. And what do you, uh, yeah, what's well, your opinion on that? I don't know. After listening to episode 666 yesterday of uh, Gray America, you know that other show you have. <laughs> Good time. Yeah, you never know, right? That's the scariest show I think I've ever heard. My God. And and usually my brain doesn't hurt when I hear technical things, but it started to. The guy is amazing. Yeah, Bob is unbelievable. Is That's a Bob. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, referencing well, Bob Greener. Yeah. I don't know. I was yeah, my 10th wedding anniversary. We were in Maui and you know, we, we got to see a luau uh, in that place that burned and you know, we also went up to the tower with all those lasers. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. You know, that that's 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 a hard one. Like I've seen a lot of things, you know, like uh what was it about blue roofs? <laughs> blue roofs survived. <laughs> what color uh, blue roof? Not blue. Cobalt blue, they get that cobalt blue well, roof yeah, happening. Some kind of paint, like lasers don't affect a certain color or something it's cobalt know, cobalt blue i think oh there you go yeah there were there were structures that uh you know when we were dealing with with high winds in this fire and you know i got boots on the ground people that see what they see and that wind is so strong and just tonight driving through uh it's real sunny and hot in jasper and then 45 minutes later at moose lake i got this gale force wind and rain it's been raining out here forever uh, we're only an hour and 50 minutes, one five zero minutes away from the evacuation of my town and six kilometers down the road. And that's about three miles for us Americans out there. Five, five miles. No, four and a half, four miles. Anyway, uh, four miles down the, the valley here is on fire. <laughs> so the first night we're here, we got one eye open, one ear open, trying to sleep. And now it's extinguished because we got nothing but excellent rain and and just yeah very lucky prayers work <laughs> paul prayers is there work. anything else we didn't get to is there anything you want to mention before we let you go no just that website jasper community team society.ca it's ca canada it's not calm so jasper community team society.ca for people that didn't have the fortunate uh, capability to insure themselves in today's day and age. And I don't have to go into that. Everyone knows what I mean. This is horrible, hard times for a lot of people. You know, we're giving what we're giving. Uh, our approved accommodation is immediately going to be housed by somebody that doesn't have a house anymore in town. So is our, our we have a rental suite. They, they've already moved on. They had no choice, but we have people are going to live in our house that don't have a house. And our business is just going to be put on hold uh, for the time being. I just thank you for having me on and the opportunity. It's not even an interview show. That's Grimerica. Grimerica. <laughs> .ca. The other show. <laughs> Please donate. <laughs> yes, an outlawed is because cancel culture. And that's something to give to. Cancel culture is horrible. And, you know, networks like the CBC should be ashamed of themselves. They are not helping humanity by following and toting the line. There's no news agency in Canada you can trust other than you guys. And there's a couple other Canadian shows I can't remember, but, you know, fighting the good fight. Thanks, buddy. Good to talk Thanks, to you. I appreciate it. I will, uh, I guess we'll see you soon. We'll see you in a few, in like uh, six weeks yeah. or something like that. Absolutely. So. I've, I've lost all my elk meat for, and I got to get some more. Right there. You can figure that out. I know a guy. I know a guy <laughs> that always has elk meat. So beautiful. And it's just all about right. tis the season. So, yes, sir. <laughs> all right, Paul, we hope uh, stay Thank safe you. out there. And we hope you get home soon. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Looks like it will. Thank you very much. And thank you, Darren and Graham. Good night. Ciao. So there's my chat with Paul Arsenault. Uh, I'm glad to hear that uh, things are getting better for him. 
and uh, that is also okay because it sure sounded for uh, for uh, for. You know, I went to bed that night just assuming I was like, "Fuck, man, this house is gonna burn down." That's crazy, and uh, but it didn't happen. So you know, the gods are good sometimes, from time to time. 